Hello everybody and welcome back to the Pulse of Finn's Nation. I'm your host Lewis Sung and uh, it's been a while since the last episode I'll admit but uh, a lot of stuff has happened since then. The NFL draft has come and gone and now we can get to talk about everything that's happened there and also we're going to go ahead and talk about what you guys have been talking about. So uh, once again we're just going to hop right into the comments of the Twitter world. Dolphins Twitter, Dolphins Facebook, all of those wonderful things and we're going to see what it is you guys are talking about and what you guys thought of the NFL draft. So without further ado let's go ahead and get started. I think Chris Greer is either on drugs or has onset Alzheimer's. He overpaid for free agents, including Flowers, who is arguably one of the worst offensive linemen in the NFL instead of getting Conklin, then he butchers the first round of the draft. This is only going to get worse. Well, that's really a cheery little uh, outlook on life right there, aren't you, pal? Alright, so obviously I disagree with that entire take. The idea that the Dolphins overpaid for free agents, uh, first of all, which, over which free agent did they overpay for exactly? Are you saying that Brandon Flowers was overpaid for? Okay, maybe you can kind of make that suggestion because Flowers only had one good year as an offensive lineman and that was of course as an offensive guard which we project them that he will end up being. We're not going to say that he's going back to left tackle. That would be a very uh, very very dumb way of looking at it and quite frankly I'm not convinced that the Dolphins are saying that are looking at overpaying guys anyway. You have Kyle Van Noy who is a very versatile very good linebacker that the Patriots developed. He can rush the passer. He can go after he can spy the quarterback. He can do pretty much anything you need him to. You have Brandon Flowers who had, yes, he was a, he was a terrible left tackle, but that one year that he was a guard for the Redskins, ooh, that was pretty. I'm still not convinced that he's going to be that way long term, but you know what? Uh, I don't mind paying him if he's going to be the good left guard for at least a couple years now while the rest of the guys develop. Dolphins got themselves a great draft class as far as I'm concerned for the future. That needs to be uh, addressed. For the future. It's not gonna, they're not going to contribute in year one. It's not going to happen. The Dolphins are going to be developing these players over a slow period of time. And so, uh, no, Chris Greer does not have Alzheimer's or anything like that. I think that the moves he made were understandable, given the unique position that the Dolphins are in. They didn't have to draft day one contributors. They only had to draft players who had potentially elite upside, which a lot of these players that the Dolphins drafted actually do. And as far as Tua Tungavailoa goes... This is the guy that everybody wanted in the first place, and now that they have him, they're thinking that it's a terrible idea. <sighs> you guys are something else, that's what I'll say about that. You just, 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 it's okay, don't worry. He's going to sit for a year, he's going to learn, he's going to grow, and then in 2021, once the offensive line has come, had time to gel, everything's going to be terrific. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm predicting right now. You can always make the OL good enough in the draft through free agency. You only get a few opportunities to draft playmakers. Miami had opportunities in this draft and passed them up. Now there is a full year in which those playmakers won't grow with the QB. Okay, so basically you're saying again that the Dolphins were making mistakes in this draft and that everything that the Chris Greer did and Brian Flores did was just not a good idea because there aren't a lot of offensive weapons to talk about regarding Tua Tungavailoa's future. Okay. Mm, no, no, that's not how it works either. Um, this is the situation, and uh, while I personally feel like they could have spent a little more uh, draft capital on actual weapons, I still wanted a running back, I wanted J.K. Dobbins, and I think the Dolphins wanted J.K. Dobbins too, considering Greer's comments the other day about how there were a few uh, table smashers. Basically, he was, the, he was like, smash the table, just really smash the table, he's not happy about what happened. But you know what? That's the that's the draft for you. Things are going to happen. Should he be more aggressive with trading up? Maybe. But considering what the Dolphins came away with, I'm not exactly upset about what happened. There will be time to get themselves some more weapons. There will be time to develop the weapons that are already on the roster. Remember what the Dolphins already have already. Devontae Parker's still there. He just signed a big contract. Uh, Albert Wilson will be there this year. Maybe if he does really well, they'll extend him again. We don't know what they're going to plan on doing. And of course, there's always a 2021 draft. So even if they don't bring him back, then there's always going to be time to grab someone else. As far as the running back position goes, you just traded for Matt Breida with a fifth round pick. He's going to be the lightning, the Jordan Howard's thunder. Patrick Laird, I think everybody's sleeping on him still just because he's not your prototypical superstar running back guy that everybody can his, has a household name. But you know what? In the limited time that he had on the field in 2020, he looked pretty darn good, all things considered. So I wouldn't be upset with sticking with that. And of course, you have Mike Gesicki, who is now going to be your uh, in line, not your in line, your slot tight end kind of guy who's going to be able to go into the seam and catch passes that way. He had his best year of his career last year when they actually used him as with the way he was supposed to be used in the first place. Adam Gase really, really messed Mike Kosicki over, and I'm very happy that Brian Flores is fixing the whole situation. But to say that the Dolphins needed to draft a bunch of weapons, yes, I would have wanted James Prochi. Yes, I would have wanted to draft a lot of these guys that just kind of passed the Dolphins by. 
but it's not the worst thing in the world, honestly. The Dolphins went ahead and they fixed the trenchers. They grabbed themselves Austin Jackson. They went and grabbed themselves Raekwon Davis. They went and grabbed themselves Robert Hunt. All these guys have elite, elite upside who, and they have some growing pains to do. They will. They'll have growing pains, but it's going to be a beautiful thing if all this stuff works over. So I'm not upset about the lack of playmakers. If you want playmakers now, that's what 2021 is for. Yes, they won't have time to grow with the quarterback, but uh, keep this in mind. Tua wasn't going to play in 2020 anyway, so uh, really you're not missing out on much. Already saw a few 2021 mocks. What is wrong with you people? I agree. What is wrong with you people? We just got past this in incredibly long 2020 draft process and already we're starting to look at 2021? I get it. It's going to be exciting when it happens. The Dolphins have two first round picks. The Dolphins have two second round picks. Oh, come on, let it breathe. It's okay. We just got past this draft class. Let's look at what they're going to do with the Dolphins now instead of already projecting towards the next year. We don't even know how they're going to work out if we need to draft more guys or not. It's okay. Don't need 2021 mock drafts. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Okay, I'm sorry. I think my favorite part of the Dolphins draft was Coach Flores smiling like a kid in a candy store. Ross finally found the right coach. Love that dude. Hashtag fins up. And yes, I agree with that whole concept. The Miami Dolphins finally found themselves a coach who can develop players and bring the best out of them the way that coaches are supposed to. Bill Belichick has done it for years. And I guess all the years that Brian Flores spent under Belichick finally kicked in a little bit because... Look at all the coaches that the Dolphins have had to deal with over the years who have come from the Belichick coaching tree. Matt Patricia, uh, he's not really doing all that well, and that's why I said that he needs to fight for his job, and that's why he was not a threat to draft Tua Tonga-Vailoa, which uh, turned out to be true because they didn't. They draft Jeffrey Okuda, just like everybody thought they would. So that's not an issue. Hallelujah for that. Dolphins got their quarterback. Um, you have other guys like Bill O'Brien, who is... <laughs> Do we need to talk about Bill O'Brien? He's he, Things are not pretty in Houston right now. And of course, that little draft they debacle where he basically yelled at the computer and slammed the keyboard. I don't know. He, he, he wasn't happy. And I don't know what the bleep I'm doing. <laughs> that's, kind of, that's, that, that's funny. He needs to get himself some computer competency skills, I guess. But either way, it's the Dolphins finally found themselves a coach that I believe can bring them into the next decade or so of greatness. And that's something that's really refreshing, considering all the turmoil that the Dolphins have gone through over the years. They got the quarterback, they got the coach. All that's left to do now is develop the guys under them so that they can bring them into the, into the next future of awesomeness. Hopefully that happens. Dolphins draft. What I disliked. Missing OT Wirfs and running back Dobbins by just a few picks. Wasn't a fan at all of the OT Jackson, Safety Jones, Guard Kintley picks at all. The Dolphins seemed unwilling to trade up. And is there any way this isn't NFL's worst OL in the NFL again in 2021? Okay, point number one. Uh, I agree with you that I didn't like that the Dolphins missed out on Tristan Wirfs. Uh, I would have loved to have him play right tackle, and he would have been protecting Tua's blind side for the next decade or so, assuming all goes well. But uh, we can't have everything we want, unfortunately. Um, as far as missing out on J.K. Dobbins, yes, again, I do agree with that as well. Baltimore Ravens snipe the Dolphins again. It's kind of what they do. Uh, I do disagree with Greer's unwillingness to trade up and get their guy, but um, at the same time, I can understand that if what the compensation the teams were looking for were ridiculous. We don't know what the, the teams wanted for those trade-ups. Like, maybe they wanted the whole draft class just for this one guy. The thing about having an abundance of draft, of draft picks, this is my personal speculation of the whole thing. If teams know that you have an abundance to spare, they're going to try and squeeze whatever they can out of you. It's like, oh, look at all the draft picks you have there. Hmm, let's see. We'll take a third. We'll take a, a, your fourth. Ooh, and uh, we'll take a couple of your fifths and a couple sevenths, too. Uh, we don't know what the Ravens would have been demanding to get those guys. And so with that in mind, I, I'm not going to begrudge Chris Greer for not trading up to get those guys. And uh, that's going to regarding some of the uh, the table smashers that we, they was talked about earlier. So as far as I'm concerned, uh, I do not I do regret that we missed out on those players but uh, I'm not particularly upset with what the Dolphins did as far as not liking Austin Jackson Solomon Kinley uh, the safety Brandon Jones uh, I didn't know those players but I'm not going to be upset about it either because, again, every single scouting report that I've seen talks about how high the upside is. And that's what I wrote in my article for 5 Reasons Sports, so which you can go check out, by the way. That's a little shameless plug for you there. But as far as I'm concerned, Austin Jackson is going to be a very high upside player who needs to be developed. He's raw. He needs to get his lumps. He needs to learn what it means to be an NFL left tackle. He needs to get his technique going. And that's what the Dolphins are going to spend 2020 teaching him. Solomon Kinley, same deal. He's a 
really big, gruff, run blocking, power blocking type of guard, and that's what the Dolphins haven't had in a very long time. So Solomon Kinley also needs time to learn on his technique, learn how to be a proper NFL guard, get his hands worked on, get everything taken care of so that he can use all that strength he's got to basically make the offensive line something to be feared. Brandon Jones, he's a very versatile, he's a very smart NFL safety, and uh, that just means that we don't have to worry about replacing the jersey number. He's just going to take Rashad Jones' number 20 and we can all recycle those jerseys. Isn't that wonderful? But saving money aside, uh, the players that the Dolphins picked are very high upside and so I'm not upset about them. I, of course, had personal preferences too, but I, again, this is not something where I'm going to judge Chris Greer for selecting something that I don't agree that they needed to select. The only thing that I will is the long snapper. Why a long snapper? For real, why? I didn't think the Dolphins needed a long snapper. Did you think the Dolphins needed a long snapper? I don't think they needed a long snapper. But uh, that's a different story altogether. After 30 years of loving this team and literally 25 years of obsessive draft mocking, watching, and praying, I have never in my life been more confident for the future of this franchise. If you think 2019 was a fail, we didn't watch the same season. 2020 and beyond, fins up. And uh, again, that is a sentiment that I will agree with. 2019 was definitely not a fail. Uh, it even, no matter how you look at 2019, it was not a fail. Whether you were in the tank for two a crowd, it wasn't a fail because guess what? You got your quarterback anyway. Way, so huzzah for that and uh, if you thought that 2019 was a fail because the Dolphins didn't win that many games well again you have to keep in mind the the talent that was there did not exactly make it easy for them to win any games that was the whole idea was to strip the roster down get themselves going for the next year and beyond so that that way they would be able to start over from scratch instead of keep putting band-aids on holes that are too big to actually cover up so this is an excellent start, and as far as I'm concerned, the Dolphins' future is very bright thanks to the fact that they've decided to finally look at things the right way. They're still in a very unique position because 2020 is also a year in which winning is not that important. They can focus on developing those players, and then in 2021, let the fun begin. <laughs> it's going to be so much fun. After going into last year with what many considered the worst QB room in the league, I'd say Fitz, Rosen, and Tua have easily become one of the better QB groups in the NFL as a whole. Thoughts? Okay, well, here are my thoughts. Yes. Yes, they have. Okay, so that's all I got for this episode of the Pulse of Finns Nation. I'm going to just shake the rust off here a little bit and basically try to get back into the groove of things. I want to see your comments down there in the set comment section below. I want to see them on Twitter. I want to see them on Facebook. I want to see them on Reddit. And if you don't give me any comments, well, I'm just going to go ahead and find some then. <laughs> You're not safe from me. You're never safe from me. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and say thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you all in the next episode of the Pulse of Finns Nation here on the 5 Reasons Sports Network. And until then, we will see you all next time. Good night. Again, let's see what happens with Brandon Flowers. Can he continue the rejuvenation? There would have been no question that he, uh, Tua would have been protected last. Uh,